Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. This morning's Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Walter Brody and Tony Dixon, and today we celebrate the feast of Emperor Henry II, um, who was a saint and emperor in the 11th century and knew the meaning of today's entrance antiphon better than most. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose abundant grace prepared St. Henry to be raised up by you in a wonderful way from the cares of earthly rule to heavenly realms, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that amid the uncertainties of this world, we may hasten toward you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation I cannot endure, Solomon assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festival my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. What right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. The things you have done and I have been silent. You thought that I was one just like yourself. But now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. 
Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go to the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are they who suffer persecution for justice' sake. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there teach and proclaim his message in their cities. The Gospel of the Lord. I found as a nice little rule, when we're tempted to say, I had no idea or no one told me, I've always kind of, I've learned to suspect that statement as untrue. Now, it doesn't mean that the person is not necessarily telling the truth, as, at least as far as they know it, but what I, this is what I found. <laughs> Usually, it was said, we just didn't want to hear it. If <laughs> you know that phenomenon, when somebody says something important and we're going, la, 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 this is not, I'm not hearing this, this is, this is not actually what's happening. Well, by the way, that is exactly what happens with today's gospel. It hits like a thunderclap. And it's unavoidable. <laughs> but what's amazing is that we tend to go, la, 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 I, I can't hear this. And this is the thing. I don't want to sound too harsh on this point. <laughs> um, we all do it. <laughs> and if someone says, not me, <laughs> Okay, Peter. <laughs> Good on you. Um, there's not one of us that will hear that and then think, oh, I've done a perfectly good job. And that's why Jesus has to speak with the thunderclap. And this is also what makes it so complex. We heard it in Hosea last week um, in one of the readings where God says, I'm set against myself when he's referring to his love for Ephraim because God does not want to execute his great wrath, and yet he has to. And so he's conflicted, just like a parent is conflicted, when you love your child and know you have to punish them. Because the unpunished child grows up worse. But then you have to have the balance of like, but how much is too much? 
And by the way, you're going to make a lot of mistakes in the process. You're, you're going to make a lot of mistakes in the process. God knows the exact amount, but the heartbreak for him is usually, well, what I'm training them for is beyond their capacity to understand and to live out. Which is why when we go la la la, God goes, okay, how about this? Um, I'm not going to give you the full cross right now. How about a little splinter? <laughs> how about this, this tiny little thing? And I'm not even talking about the cross that is the cross of Jesus. No, I'm just talking about your cross. <laughs> He'll give you a small splinter of what... <sighs> He'll give you a small splinter of what you're meant to be. And this is a paradox that I struggled for many years to figure out. I could only write a parable. Um, this was, I was in my late 20s, I think, mid-20s, when I was writing it. You're given a splinter, and you carry it, and it's incredibly heavy. And the longer you carry it, it gets bigger and bigger. And then there's that temptation to then say, well, you know what? My life would be a whole lot easier if I just dropped this thing. <laughs> As it keeps growing and the challenge keeps getting more significant, we are understandably tempted to say, I'll put this down. But <clears throat> what happens is this. That splinter grows into the door to life. It's the foundation, the spirit, the scaffolding, if you will, for your humanity. And to reject the cross, to reject the cross that you've been given, is not only um, on the shallow level immoral, <laughs> on a deeper level it's a betrayal of who we are and who God is. And so when Jesus says, those who love their life will lose it, this is it. Um, you can't be yourself and reject it. Because who knows you better than your creator? And who knows you and loves you more than your redeemer? But if we say to him, nah, I don't want that. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. Um, there's only one guy that kind of said it in such a way that makes sense to me. His name was George MacDonald. He wasn't even Catholic. <laughs> where the Lord says, it's kind of a parable, where he says, I have no other blessedness to give you. This is God speaking to the disciple. I have no other blessedness to give you. Now what that means is this. With each person, God doesn't give you half love. He will give you everything that he is that you're capable of receiving. And so because God wants to give you everything and has trained you and designed you for everything, if you were to ask for less from God, is quite literally saying to God, stop loving me. I don't want you. I want the stuff you give me. And anyone who knows in a relationship has, has felt that pain, where you want to give somebody your heart and they kind of go, ugh. Just, you know, put the money on the table and leave. And so, it takes a tremendous amount of interior conversion and the cross to see it. And it's not as if God has been hiding it from us. So when we say to God, I never knew this, it's like, nope, <laughs> not, not even close. First of all, today's psalm, not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, God's like, you've been giving me all this stuff for centuries. But, this is God's little thing, it's already mine. <laughs> you know, like, it's not as if God's like, oh, thank you. It's like, it's like, I 
didn't have one of those. Thank you so much. It's like, no. You can't, in a benevolent way, give to God something that he doesn't already own. If we honestly think that, we're worshiping a false god. Step one. Um, step two is then, well, then why does God want our sacrifices? Well, because that's the best we can do. <laughs> a turtle dove or two, you know, a goat. <laughs> and you can imagine God's humility in receiving the gift of a goat. He's like, oh, well, thank you. That's really adorable. The best analog is your two-year-old grandchild giving you a drawing. It's adorable. It's beautiful. It's not a Rembrandt. It's delightful on that most inner sense, but you're not going to bring it to a, an artist auction. <laughs> They'll look at it and go, I, I don't want this. It's like, yes, but it, my granddaughter made it for me. It's like, well, good for you. And unless we see all of our sacrifices and actions before God in that light, that it only has value because of that heartfelt relationship, we, we can't truly know him. Again, it's right in the psalm. And the Psalms are as about as ancient as biblical texts get. And Israel already had hints of it in the very beginning. But it's so hard to put into speech. And you see the same problem with the prophet Isaiah, where the prophet is saying, guys, you're worshiping me, but you're no better than Sodom and Gomorrah, which, you know, <laughs> overtones that shows you how old um, these traditions go that the story of Sodom and Gomorrah had been passed on from generation to generation and he's saying you're not doing any better than them and when you have a story that's designed to say that these people are the worst of the worst and you're just like them you can imagine then how Isaiah might be well received but what's interesting about the book of the prophet Isaiah is that it actually covers a 200-year period in Israel's history. And this is the time of their relative triumph and security. Under the reign of Ahaz, the kingdom of Judah is relative, relatively stable. They're doing okay. And they think, you know what? These are the good days. And Isaiah goes, nah. You've forgotten the heart. You're wearing too much makeup. It's fake. And you can imagine how well that goes for him. And Israel's long story in the book of the prophet Isaiah, which will unfold for a little while, is them coming to realize that their idolatry was not in their practices, but in their desires. And so when we realize about ourselves that we are like an inch, an inch from idolatry and from paganism, even if all of our religious practices might be perfect and pristine, this is the, this is the fun part. You can become a whole lot more gentle. Um, because you're not trying to preserve the perfect you realize it's like, wow, the greatest of human achievements is nothing more than a child's scribbles posted on a refrigerator. This helped me then when I was learning the history of um, Western civilization. Um, on Saturday, we had the feast of St. Benedict, who, as all of the West had entirely collapsed, and every social, political, and religious institution in Western Europe had just gone poof. Only about 400 years, 500 years later, had some semblance of stability started to come back. 
And the Western world had begun to realize that kings had failed them, that power had failed them. And strangely, this peculiar religion, they didn't call it a religion, but that's for the sake of clarity for us, this strange god who loved the poor, who didn't seem to care very much about the difference between a peasant and a king, has now blessing those who followed him. You can see sometimes the strange paradoxes in um, royal figures, um, em imperial figures in the, uh, between the years 500 and 900 in this period, where they're just like, huh, you can fight a thousand battles and you can kill a, as many pagans as you like, but that doesn't change the world. Something else has to be done to create peace. Well, what is that? Now, a saint like Henry is an amazing guy. Because most of us can suffer the temptation of thinking, if you just give me money, peace, and security, I will be happy. And Henry, like a few other saintly kings in his time, knew that that was a lie. If you truly want to establish peace, if you truly want to establish justice, if you truly want to find what blessedness is, worship the true God. Or to paraphrase something everyone had heard before, seek ye first the kingdom, and the rest will be given unto you. So he did small gestures. Let's establish a diocese here. <laughs> let's build a church there. Um, let's give people the ability to worship in peace so that, you know, maybe in their worship, then somehow the true God will bless us. And it worked. It worked. And it began a miraculous transformation where societies that two to three hundred years prior <laughs> um, would establish the rule of law with who had the bigger stick <laughs> started having amazing ideas like the king is a servant of God servant of the people and not ruling on his own whim but for the good of all. The lesson I got from a lot of this is not that there's some mysterious esoteric wisdom that is only allowed for the spiritual elect that do everything perfect. No. From the very beginning take up that small little sliver and as it gets bigger rejoice because your door into life is only getting better Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ. 
who humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of blessed Henry, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and of peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of you. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Henry, St. Boniface, St. Louis, St. Stephen of Hungary, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis our Pope and Gary our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you besides, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of blessed Henry, sanctify our minds and hearts that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.